Hello, I'm Hivis Jules. Welcome to my channel. I've been to Cotswold Airport at Kemble, UK to watch some airplanes being dismantled for recycling. How many people do you reckon it takes to chop up a Boeing 747? Well, I discovered it was roughly one and his name's Andy. Anyway, I'll tell you about him later. It's October 2023 and, as promised, I'm back at Air Salvage International to watch the final teardown of the airplanes. The link in the description tells you what happens to the planes when they first arrive at Kemble. So the beautiful metal birds are now fully relieved of their valuable stuff, like the engines, avionics, the precious metal connectors, and they're now pretty much large plane-shaped tubes of scrap aluminium moving down the inexorable path to their new lives as a window frame or perhaps a can of Stella Artois. I got to drive myself across the airfield this time, escorted by a Ford Fiesta with an orange light on its roof. Of course I was playing the Top Gun theme tune in my head, aviator shades on and just a palm on the steering wheel, feeling really quite cool. I'm met by self-confessed waste nerd Neil who's the operations manager of waste management company Smith's Gloucester Limited. He's worked in the waste industry for nearly 20 years and getting the planes taken down and finally out of Kemble is his responsibility. His passion for waste is infectious and even before we start talking about aircraft, he's told me about the magic of recycling and how if we're careful, we barely need anything to go to landfill these days. He's brimming with knowledge and enthusiasm for biodigesters, methane, metal, plastic recycling. His family still thinks he's a bin man and he laughs as he tells me about finding buyers for vast amounts of valuable scrap metal. When we walk into the dismantling yard together, the first thing that pops into my head when I see the mountain of torn up aluminium, steel, chairs, wood, insulation and dross Sort of looks like my smallest daughter's bedroom, only here I can still see some floor. The heap of broken up planes, which is about the size of ten Arctic lorries parked up together, will be packed into the bulkers and taken as is to metal buyers up north. They never want to run any of their fleet empty, so they time the deliveries of scrap with pickups of other material. I guess an empty truck runs at a cost to the company, but also to the environment. Their main dismantling machine is Andy's Doosan crawler with a rotating crusher. He makes pretty light work of pulverising aviation aluminium, separating different materials from recycling, slicing happily through the re reinforced steel rods. The Doosan has a high reach boom and serves a sort of late Cretaceous look with its Tyrannosaurus mouth parts. Its teeth are made of wear resistant grade HB steel and has a tooth tip crushing force of more than 50 tonnes. A second-hand Doosan will set you back about 250k. Here's Andy showing off his spaghetti spinning skills, teasing out the flexes from the heap. I've got to say I did fawn a bit when he came over for a chat. I was well impressed by the delicacy of his excavator skills. So I asked him what his favourite bit to chop up is, and he said, well, none of it. It's just a job. Get in, crush it, get out. Air Salvage International bring in the front of a little easy jet. And I'll just let you listen to that one being chomped up. I asked Neil and Andy about the risks in this industry and they both mentioned fires so they sort of both looked over at me casually saying that it happened all the time and that though the planes are drained of all their caustic elements oils hydraulic fluid and fuel is always some of it there still flammable left lazing around half evaporated in the tank the wings are reinforced with titanium ribs and they can spark if you touch them with the crusher um, which could ignite some of the fluids during dismantling I sort of assume that gallons of water and foam and sirens would ensue, but Andy just goes over with his nipper, chops off the offending burning part and pops it into the corner of the yard to safely burn itself out, telling me it's no biggie. Here they are dropping an A320 on the ground. 
Enjoy the noises. accidents watching this. No wonder the debris of a crash is spread so wide when the aluminium skin is barely four millimetres thick. Planes are strong at withstanding flying forces, but on the ground there's nothing much to them. The wind picks up, and it blows an unravelled oxygen mask around, and it stops by my feet. It was really interesting seeing the smaller planes being chopped up, but what I'd been really hanging around to see was the big bird being dismantled. So a few months pass and I'm back up at Kemble in November, hovering about, trying to catch the disassembly of Gulf, Charlie, India, Victor, November, the British Airways Boeing 747436. And as much as her Chatham dockyard livery is peeling and her cockpit and wings missing, she is still beautiful. And I'm just about to watch the end of her life. Before they take down Victor November, they go for a tea break. And amazingly, they let me hang around on my own to get my camera set up and have nose about. So I perch my GoPro on a pile of spent airplane tyres at the edge of the yard and go for a wander amongst the remaining planes. It's pretty still except for some gentle road noise and the ticking and creaks of the patient airframes waiting in line to be sliced. I stand at the side of the 747 looking up at her vast tail still brightly painted in red and blue. Then I just wander around, touching the warmish rubber wheels and the coolish aluminium airframe. Some of the half-chopped planes sit with their cross sections exposed. The wind flapping seat covers, bits of galley, seat belts and yellow insulation. In that moment, I felt I was in a graveyard. So I sat on a concrete block under a bisected Air France plane and stared at the 747. In the quiet, with the heavy machinery resting, several crows landed on the tip of her tail and sat there cawing. She even has her own fly past. But Victor November isn't quite destined to be teaspoons yet. Her iconic fuselage has been purchased by a film production company and they will use giant pieces of her fuselage as props in a new series about the Pan Am Flight 103 which was destroyed by a bomb and crashed into Lockerbie, Scotland, tragically killing 270 people. Andy hops into his orange dinosaur and drives straight at the 747 behind her starboard wing, puncturing the fuselage with a closed, crushing jaw. He snips and tears sections in the belt shape around her middle. Four minutes pass. I notice all the other work in the yard has stopped and people are appearing as if from nowhere, watching, quiet.
five minutes. A twisting metallic sound screams out. Things pause for just a moment, then her massive tail section, held on by a thread of metal, slams into the ground. All 80 tons of it, flinging shards of aluminium sideways and creating a shockwave I felt in my core. Accelerated and melancholy at the same time. Some were delighted to see her broken and out of the way, and others were sad. Everyone, though, had an opinion. What is it about the Queen of the Skies that is so emotive? I suppose she represents something different to everybody family adventure, allowing connection with others, and dreamy engineering, but also something trustworthy and perhaps protective. Once planes and ships become a she, they definitely become more than just nicely designed and useful objects. And they demand a sort of emotional connection. When we tear them apart for the next phase, they return to simply being resources for us to use over again, rinse, repeat. It takes a further two days to take down this 7-4. All that's left now of Victor November in Gloucestershire as a cockpit resting on the side of a taxiway and a few souvenir overhead lockers to be sold on eBay and, well, perhaps the tiny square of fuselage that I kept for myself. Thank you, Smiths Gloucester Limited and Air Salvage International for sharing all of this with us.